Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Nice to uh, nice to see you all. So we start the new uh, the new sukkah of Kosha and Mati, um, and I, I think this uh, Imitz Hashem this year is a, a very beautiful one, uh, a nice topic. So um, I'm, I'm actually going to we'll, we'll, we will work our way through the Gemara um, eventually, but for now I just want to try and uh, ask some more general questions on the sukkah. Um, conceptual questions, what, our, our normal opening move, which is to ask, what, what is the malacha of kosher? What, what is the malacha itself? What defines or makes the malacha of kosher? What, which tzar is the choshev and significant result, tzar, which creates the uh, malacha, which uh, creates the malacha that we're concerned about? So um, there appears to be, when one looks at the uh, poskim and the rishonim, there appears to be two candidates for the malacha. Um, candidate number one is, as its name suggests, creating a kesha. Creating a knot would appear to be the uh, would appear to be the malacha. Um, the alternative candidate is that the um, chibur, the attachment, the linking of the two threads, is what the malacha is, um, irrespective of rather than the kesha being the malacha. The kesha is the means to the end, but it's not, um, it's not the end in itself. The kesha is the, the means of attaching or creating the two together. However, the malacha itself is not the kesha, it's not creating of the knot. The malacha itself is the attachment that's created. So those are the two sadodim. Now each sad has, um, an, uh, 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 just thinking about it, each sad it has a different attraction to it. <clears throat> um, the attraction of um, the malacha being defined as the chibur is that we understand why this is a choshev result, why this is a significant result. Um, the chibur, the attachment of the two threads, has a choshevus to it, which uh, which makes the malacha. Whereas just the creation of a knot, it doesn't seem simple that uh, a knot in and of in itself should have the choshevus to be a malacha. On the other hand, the simplest understanding of the um, word kosher is that the kesher itself is the malacha, um, rather than the chibur, the attachment that's being uh, created. So each sad has its uh, has a potential uh, advantage to it. However, um, each sad also has a complication. So I, I didn't manage to achieve a clear raya or a clear piece of evidence as to what the malacha is. Um, however, um, there are a number of sources which indicate a little bit uh, one way or another. And I just really want to work through um, some of these sources together and see what we come up with. Um, the first Maramokum is, um, is a Ramah. I say it's a Ramah, it's really a smug. And I printed this on uh, at the top of page one. Um, at the top of page one, I printed the Shulchan Aruch and Mishnah Brewer on it and the Bi'a Lacha, um, partly just by way of introduction to the Malacha and just because some of the principles that we will discuss as the Sugi goes on, such as Kesha Shal Kayama come up. Um, for now, though, I simply wanted to draw your attention to the closing lines of the Shulchan Aruch in Shin Yod Zayin at Sif Aleph, where the Ramah says that, um, he says as follows, quoting the smug, the hard of Enon base Kesharim Zer Al Zer, that which you need two Kesharim, one on top of the other, Hanukkah Shekosha based Ram Yacha, that's when you're attaching two threads together. Aval im osa kesha berosh echad shal chut or mashicha. If you create a knot at the end of a thread, dinu kishteik sharim. Then its din is like two kisharim. Now the logic of the smug is as follows: When you attach two threads together, if you just create one kesha, you interleave them once. There's no cue to it at all. It's just uh, a loose attachment. There's no cue to it whatsoever. There's no permanence to it whatsoever. Only if you create the double knot is there a permanence. So there's the smug. That's when you're attaching two threads together. However, if you create a knot at the ends of a thread, um, then even one knot is, even one twist and loop is permanent um, because you've, you've interwoven it and you've now pulled it tight and such a knot has permanence. Now, when I first saw this smug, this Ramar, really, I didn't, I, I didn't uh, unfortunately don't have the, uh, I don't go, make my business to go through every smug on a sugya. However, the Ramar I saw, and the Ramar brings this smug, when the smug says that the, um, Malacha is also the end of a thread. Initially, I thought that meant that the kesher itself is the malacha, because when you tie a knot at the end of a thread, 
um, the manacha is not the attachment, but merely the creation of the knot. And uh, I still think this is a pretty good raya. Nonetheless, one could be madcha, this raya, we can push it off, and one could argue that um, even there you are attaching the two things together. It just happens to be the two things you are attaching together are one thread, different parts of the thread. When you create a knot, you are attaching different bits of the thread together in the knot. So it's possible even there that the real malacha is the chibur, and the mukesha is just the means to create an attachment rather than it being the malacha itself. Um, nonetheless, it does seem a little bit of a doichik to say uh, such a sorry, it does seem a little forced to say that the chibur is what's happening here as opposed to the creation of the kesha. So this was the first semi raya that I found. Um, maybe I'll pause there. I, I don't know if anyone does. Anyone think about this chakira at all? Did anyone consider it? Did anyone find rias either way? Uh, what, or? What, but surely, what you said doesn't would apply throughout the thread, not only at the rosh of the thread. Um, I mean, the smug I think just says the end of the thread because that's where you more easily do the knot. That you have to. It, the point of the smug is simply the looping of the thread into itself. Um, but we, we thought of perhaps it's because of the usefulness sometimes. You know, you put a, a knot at the end of a thread because you want to pull it through something in order to be used. It's going to hold. Right, then that certainly would imply that it's the chivas of the knot itself. The other reason you put a knot at the end of threads, by the way, is to stop them untangling. I, I was thinking also, like, like, Paul, like it was more at the end because I was thinking it was compared maybe to when you're sewing, isn't it like? two as opposed to three stitches at the end. And if you're writing, it could be one letter at the end of a thing. So I thought, isn't this comparable? Um, the, 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 the it's dangerous to do that. I, I, yeah, I, I don't, I think the comparison is, is, is only superficial, meaning you are right that the last letters in a book have a chashivas because of the completion of the sefer. But I think the londos here is um, what makes the kasha shalkayama. So I would be cautious with that comparison. Okay, so th these were some of the, um, one of the rayas that I, I, I thought of. The second um, raya, um, it was not my own. I saw this brought in, in, uh, in, in, a, in a contemporary safer. Um, I, I, for the sake of simplicity, I, I printed the source as the Mishnah Brewer, even though its original source is the, um, is the Mogan Avram. Um, the Shulchan Aruch that I cut and pasted basically compares kosher and matir, and says they are symmetrical malachas with respect to which sort of kesher we are talking about. In other words, basically, the, the Ramah says, now that the Shulchan Aruch has told us all the dinim of kesher shal kayama, and Maisa Uman, which we're not going to go into all the details of which sort of kasha it is and isn't applicable to. Uh, the Ramah then adds in and says that the Hatara, the undoing of a knot, is the same as kasha. I will mention, maybe just I'll use this as a chance, as an aside, and I did speak to Josh and Adam about this during the week. Um, the the Sukhi of Kosha really has a whole payrek in the Sechus Shabbos um, to itself. Toysus, by the way, references this peric. Um, he says, Beresh Elu Kishorim. There's a peric called Elu Kishorim. There's a whole peric in the Sefer Shabbos about Kishorim. Um, we're not able in this context of learning a sugya of, you know, four or five lines about Kosher Mate to go through all the details. But a significant part of that peric is discussing um, what sort of kasha we're talking about over here. And, and it needs a number of criteria and exactly how these criteria express themselves and how they combine is, is, is the topic of the sugya. But it has to be a kasha shal kayama. It has to have a degree of permanence, and it also has to be a kasha of an uman, um, sorry, a maisa uman. It has to be a, a somewhat professional knot. Um, in other words, it has to have a certain uh, um, strength and weightiness to this kasha in order for it to be the monotha. We're not really going to go into too much detail about the nitty gritty of which sort of kasharim qualify or don't qualify because it's beyond the scope of the Shir, and in terms of practical aloch, it's also uh, both the also, it's simply a question of the dry and dry bonons. So, um, uh, why, why though does this come up? Because the Shulchan Aruch in this extract speaks about what defines a Kesha Shalkayama, or what defines as a Kesha of Uman, and the Ramah says in in Hatarase, that the Hatara is symmetrical. Now, if you look in the Mishnah Brewer with care, and this is explicit in the Mogan Avram, the Mogan Avram and the Mishnah Brewer basically um, make the point 
that when it comes to matir, undoing a knot, unraveling a knot, as opposed to kosher, it doesn't make a difference whether you literally unpick and undo the knot, or whether you do manatik, which is you basically slice through the thread in order to separate the two threads. From the point of view of matir, it makes no difference. So say the poiskim, because either way you've detached the threads. Now this seems to be a, a pretty strong proof that the malacha of matir is not unraveling the knot, but is detaching the threads, um, removing the chibur of the threads. Now, if we go with the formula that kosher and matir are symmetrical, this would seem to suggest that the malacha of matir is in the attachment or detachment, and therefore, by extension, the malacha of kosher is also in the chibur as opposed to the knot. The knot is simply a means, but isn't the essence of the malacha. Now, um, again, um, one can um, agree or disagree to this raya, and there's a lot of things beyond the scope of, uh, of our discussion as to whether this is an ironclad proof or not, um, also linked to what the relationship would be between uh, kosher and, and uh, mate, whether indeed they're completely symmetrical. So uh, again, this is the second raya um, concerned with this. The third raya is from a Rambam in Pirik Yud Halacha um, um, Yud Aleph, in which the Rambam says that, um, I printed this, I think, on the, on the source sheet, the Rambam says in Pirik Yud Halacha Yud Aleph, I'm sorry, Pirik Yud Halacha um, Ches, the Rambam says that if you are um, if you um, twist threads, so when you have lots of threadlets, um, you twist them into a, uh, into a single thread, and that's what creates a thread. There's two reasons why one twists lots of threadlets into a thread. One reason, the simplest reason, is to strengthen it. But the more profound reason is that when you take wool and you want to make it into a thread, you have to spin it. That means you twist the wool to make a thread. The problem is that the thread always unravels. So what you do is you take two twisted threads and you um, twist them into each other so that they are in opposite, you, and you attach them in opposite directions. So each of these two single threads is twisted in the opposite way. And therefore they're both trying to unravel the opposite direction. And therefore they work against each other and hold the thread in um, intention and stop it unraveling. Uh, is, am I, is this reasonably clear or am I, am I confusing, uh, uh, confusing everyone? I, I should stress I'm no expert on, um, I don't know if there's a lot of Omer Dover Bashem Omri when it comes to Google. Um, I should stress I'm, I'm no expert on, on thread making, um, but this is what I understood from, uh, from the, my uh, Google research, um, that this is the other reason why you twist threads, why threads are never made up of one twisted strand of wool, after you spin the wool, I, I, I didn't say weaving before, I meant spinning. After you spin the wool to twist the threads, the thread will naturally unravel and become a rough piece of wood as opposed to a tight thread. If you then attach it to another thread, which is which has spun the opposite direction, or you just turn it another way, then each one naturally wants to unwind itself the opposite way around. And if you've twisted them together, their tension holds them together. So this is the malacha of paisel psilem, of attaching two threads together. And what the Raman says in, in Pope Yod Halacha Ches, is that this is a tolder of kosher. Now, um, again, in that malacha, there seems to be um, only chibur without a kesher. Um, and therefore, again, this would seem araya um, that the, the malacha that's significant over here is chibur attachments as opposed to kesher and not. Because when you twist the threads together, there isn't a knot, it's simply a twist. And nonetheless, since that's bound the threads together, that's enough to make the malacha. May I ask, why would it only be a tolder? Um, because at the end of the day, um, it's, it's, it's done in a different manner, because you're not attaching it through creating a knot, you're attaching it merely through twisting. We will relook at this Rambam, I'm hopefully still in today's chair, and we'll see that there are other distinctions between it and kosher, kasha, but for now it's just enough to say that the Malacha is done in a very different form. Thank you. Okay. So um, this is a, another lichura, another raya that the malach is, is really is the chibur, the attachment as opposed to the kesher, the knot that one is making. But one could be madcha this raya 
because at the end of the day, we're talking about a tolder of Tofer, Tofer, as Gary pointed out, and not the Av itself. Um, so again, um, it's not clear if there's an iron cloud proof. Cloud proof. We have seen that tolders can differ from their others fairly significantly. Nonetheless, it does appear reasonable that if the tolder is a chibur type activity, then presumably the av is also a chibur type activity as opposed to the creation of a knot. So uh, this seems another proof. Um, so this is the uh, second proof that I, I wanted, uh, the third proof, I'm sorry, that I wanted to, uh, wanted to bring. Um, the fourth proof that I wanted to bring is a um, is an, a fascinating proof, and I think it gets us very deeply into the sukya itself. Now, the Gemara asks. So this involves us going back to the Gemara. Um, the Gemara asks that. Um, uh, um, When um, the Gemara asks about the um, kosher and matir, which scenarios do we have of kosher and matir in the Mishkan? And the final answer of the Gemara is that we have this with sode chilozen, the net making or net use of uh, the trappers of the chilozen used to make uh, kosherim and unravel them. Now, what's the scenario of making kasharim and unraveling them in the net making process of the chilozen? So, Tosfus brings from Rashi in the beginning of Perik Edu Kasharim, who says that they used to um, uh, knot and unknot the knot the the nets in the um, in the process of uh, opening and closing the nets. So quotes Tosfus from Rashi, and that would be a matir shaloi almanas liksher, a case of matir which is not almanas um, liksher, where you are not doing so in order to make another knot. Um, Rashi in there on the spot, we don't have such a, um, a Rashi. Um, Rashi there seems to say scenario kosh almanas liksher. Rashi by us says that all these nets are made, she call restless, all these um, nets are serious, these are the second last one in Rashi, are serious kashorim kashorim, are made from knots. They're in Kishrei Kayoma, they're permanent knots, great. Sometimes one wants to uh, take threads of one knot net and put it onto another net. And that's when you do kosher and matir. So you transfer basically threads from one net to another net that is kosher and matir. Now there's an amazing um, ritva on this Rashi. <coughs> and I printed this on, um, on the bottom of the first page of the handout. The background to this is the topic of whether the malacha of matir is only matir al manas liksher or not. Is the malacha, let me give you an example of this. Um, we learnt uh, Tosus referenced on Ayn Gimel Amud base the issue of Korea. There's many malachas which are symmetrical. Um, for example, we have Tofa and Korea, sewing and tearing. We have kosher and matir, um, knotting and unknotting. We have kosev and moichek, writing and uh, deleting and erasing. We have boina and sosa, building and destroying. And Tosfus on Ayn Gimel Amad Aleph from the Mishnah that lists the Malachas discusses when you, whether the Malacha of Matir is only when it's Almanas Liksher or not. Because the Mishnah um, says Moichek Almanas Lichtoi, when it lists the Malachas, it doesn't say that the Malacha is Moichek and Kosev. It says the Malacha is Kosev writing and Moichek Almanas Lichtoi. Um, erasing in order to write something else there. Meaning to say that the malacha of Kosev is creating um, symbols that carry communication. The malacha of Moichek is not deleting these symbols, removing and erasing these symbols. The malacha of Moichek is preparing paper for another kasav. Are you deleting the writing? Almanas lichtoim in order to use the paper for um, something else. So you see 
that the melacha of moichik, says Toysus, is only on manas lichtoi. So Toysus' discussion is really the other melachas, are they also symmetrical? Is Kosev only Almanas, in the same way as Kosev is only Almanas Lechtov, is um, uh, Matir only Almanas Liksher, where you're unknotting is preparation for re-knotting. In other words, the point of the Malacha isn't the detaching or the undoing of the knot, the point is preparing the threads for another um, uh, attachment. Now, Tosis discusses that also on Ayn Gibbon on the base, with reference to uh, other malachas, this is a general confusion with many malachas. The ritva, I don't want to go into too much detail into that discussion now, we will revisit it later. Um, the ritva, however, um, points, takes on the stance that you do not need kosher on the nas, sorry, mati on the nas liksha. You do not need to say that it is only the malacha if you undo in order to create a new knot. And his raya is absolutely fascinating and phenomenal because the ritual says as follows. He says, there are those who ask on Rashi that according to Rashi, that what you are doing with the net is detaching the threads from one net and attaching them to another net. Even though this is matir because you are undoing the knots, this isn't matil almanas liksher. It's not matil almanas liksher to reattach the same threads because you're detaching a thread and reattaching it to a different network of threads. So if you have, if you imagine your first net and you have a thread and another thread attached to it, you then detach this second thread to attach it to another net somewhere else. So this is matil. You're detaching these two threads, not almanas liksher with the intention to recreate the same knot or the same thread combination that you had previously, but to recreate a different knot, a knot that you didn't have previously, because you're now going to attach this thread to something else. So says the Ritva, as a question on Rashi, he brings it as a question on Rashi, that if you need matir al manas liksha, you need to detach in order to reattach, how are you not making the same knot again? You're reattaching it to something else. And Ritva says, this is a raya, that you don't need matir al manas liksher, that when you do the manach of matir, it doesn't have to be in order to recreate the same uh, um, uh, combination, because um, it's a different thread combination. Now, again, when I saw this Ritva, it got me thinking about the shayla. Is that the issue of the Ritva, because you're not creating um, uh, the same knot again, or is the issue because you're not creating the same thread combination again? And again, therefore, this ties into our discussion. What is the essence of the malacha? So the ritva assumes that if you need mati al manas liksha, um, it wouldn't make sense because you're doing it with a different thread, not with the same thread. Um, it, what does it mean when we talk about the creation of a knot? Is the creation of a knot something produced by two different threads, such that the Ritva can say you are now joining different threads to this, or is this the same knot with respect to the one of the threads at least, and therefore sufficient for it to be kosher on the last, mati on the last mixture of the same knot, and the only issue is that there is a third thread here. So it seems to me from the language of the Ritva, again, that the Ritva would assume that the Malacha is the combination, the Chibur that's going on, and therefore the Ritzel says, I'm bothered. If you need Matir al Manas Liksher, how would it help in Rashi where you are detaching these threads, but then joining this thread to a different thread? This wouldn't be called al Manas Liksher. And therefore uh, the Ritzel says it must be that Rashi holds you don't need um, Matir al Manas Liksher at all. So um, again, this Ritzel seems to imply that the Malacha is Chibur, is the attaching and joining of two threads as opposed to the creation of a knot. So I, I don't have any clear proofs, but um, to me, these seems, uh, these seems uh, indicators of, uh, of the malacha being the chibur of threads, as opposed to the kesha of threads. Is it possible to ask? Yes. This, this concept of remaking a knot, when you undo a knot and retie, it's a new knot you're making. So I, I don't understand this concept at all of remaking a knot. And also when we say when you tie one thread to a different one, 
it's not the same as different not where are we learning that Alman Almanat Likshar has to be to tie the same ones together. You know, why aren't we saying it's actually in order to make another knot? I don't, I don't again, Gary, can you explain what, what you, what's bothering you exactly? Well, the first is this concept of you are untying a knot to retie the same knot. Yes. What's this concept of the same knot? When you tie again, it is a different knot. The and secondly, when you have the idea of um, if you untie two threads, right, and then you tie one of them to something else, it's not almanat likshar. Again, I don't understand why it's not Almanac Likshar. I don't see what our source is to say that there has to be the original two threads that you tie again. Okay, the, 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 the question is a good question. Um, and the, the uh, I don't have an answer as to why the Ritva is so definite about this. But I, I'm, I'm taking a simpler task on myself. The Ritva is we'll call it making an assumption, the Ritva doesn't prove it, he just takes it on as, as a, a sort of assumption, that if you need kosher matir al manas liksher, that condition is not fulfilled by detaching thread A from thread B and then attaching thread B to thread C, to a third thread. That's the essence of what the Ritva says. Again, Rashi is a scenario where I detach the thread from one knot net and attach it to another net. Mm -hmm. So Ritva, what do you mean? How does this qualify as kosher, as matir al manas show? Hurry, you're not detaching A from B in order to reattach A from B to B. You're detaching A from B in order to attach B to C. So ask the Ritva, or brings that there are those who ask and Rashi. And he says the answer to this question is, it must be Rashi holds you don't need matir al manas show. Because if you did need matir al manas show, you can't claim you would be hired for detaching A to B in order to attach B to C. So, so let's think of what that's telling us. Um, let's make a comparison to writing. Why would it be that you are not chayev for erasing writing unless it is on the last lift in order to write something else there? So there's lots of explanations we could give. We could give an explanation because otherwise it's destructive, not constructive. You're removing information, not creating information, so on. But, but if we go with the theory that the answer to this question is, that the Moloch of Moichik is not the deletion, the erasing of the writing, but it's the preparation of a surface for more writing, then the Moloch is not in the writing, the Moloch is in the paper. So similarly, by comparison, if you need Matir on the last lecture, the explanation is that the Moloch is not the detaching of the writing, of the knot, the Moloch is preparing the threads for new, a new knot, in which case the Ritva is correct to say, Hurry, I'm not preparing over here threads A and B to recombine them. I'm comparing, I'm, I'm preparing, I'm detaching A and B to combine threads um, B and C. Now, even on that, we could argue on the Ritva because say, well, maybe it's enough that I'm just preparing B. And that's mm -hmm. it's enough that there's a common denominator here. A good question, but that's, the Ritva's assumption is in this question that it needs to be uh, preparing both threads. What would lead you to say that it needs to prepare both threads? I think only if you understand the Malacha to be the malacha of a malacha in the combination of threads. If it's a combination of threads, then the Ritva can say, I'm not detaching these to recreate the same combination, I'm detaching these to create a different combination, and therefore mm -hmm. this isn't the malacha. That's mm -hmm. the, the argument I'm putting forward in the Ritva. Um, I present all these riots with a great deal of tentativeness. Um, I don't know like an ironclad proof to this question, um, and therefore uh, I'll conclude with that simply today. This is a very, very important chakira in the malacha of kosher. Is the malacha creating a knot? Or is the malacha a chibur malacha? And I've presented, um, I think, four rias for your consideration, gentlemen of the jury. Um, let me know what you think about it uh, next week. The first raya was the um, shul, the Mishnah Brewer, the Ramah from the Smug, who says that uh, even in one thread you can create a kasha. The second raya was from the Mishnah Brewer, really the Poskin, the Machan Avram, the Amshel Shlom, and others who say that cutting the threads is matter, not just unraveling the knot. 
The third raya is from the Rambam, who talks about twisting of threads. And the fourth raya is from the Ritva, who sp um, speaks about the combination. If you detach A from B in order to attach B to C, the Ritva says that wouldn't be enough to fulfill the condition of Matir Amunas Liksher. Um, let me know what you think about this and if you find any other raya's uh, in advance of next year. Um, anyway, that's uh, an opening to our subject. And I wish you all a good evening. Thank yeah. you. Good evening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Go ahead. Thank you.